This is, uh, those are the guys who were in family with the median. I'm still talking about, if you're beginning to get lost here, or in the heat, I I'm pretty warm in here, at least uh, down here anyway. We are still talking about summary statistics. We are using some short uh, summary statistics to tell a story. It, now, I'm exemplifying with five numbers, which of course is nice because then we can look at them, but it's also in a bit ridiculous because maybe you don't get the idea that <laughs> with, this is really useful when I have like a list of a thousand numbers or two thousand numbers. Then of course it's nice to be able to summarize the story of those numbers in a few key st statistics. Having only five it may seem a little bit silly to summarize it in ten different ways, right? I have only five numbers, so hmm. Uh, but that is just to make it able for us to do it very explicitly, right? Quantiles or percentiles, actually just two synonyms for the same thing. We talk about uh, a 50% percentile or we talk about a 0.5 quantile. Why did I mention those? I mentioned those because we've already met that guy. The median as I defined it to you, was the middle number. That's the number that di divides the data in two equal sizes, right? If you find the media of your median of your data, you would have 50% of your data points below the median, and you would have 50% of your data points above the median. That's the definition of the median. That's a way to tell the story about the data. So if I tell it to you, the median is 184 centimeters, I know half of the people were below, half of the people were above. So I know something about what I'm, what I'm facing by this number. Now we could be more uh, detailed here. We could talk about other percentiles. Usually I mention if you ever take some of those tests to go to foreign universities, there is something called TOEFL, -E TOEFL, test of English as a foreign language, anyone who has tried it. A few of you have. Usually, at least back in those days when I took the test, uh, your result that you get, that's a, that's a quantile, right? You get your 90% quantile. You, we are pretty good here in, in Denmark, which means that you have 90% below you and only 10% above you, right? That's a way to tell a story about who you are in relation to this huge number of results out there. So it's a summary of statistics telling something about you. It could also, we could also have all the people out there before we do our own test and then see, hey, what is the, what is the 75, what is the 90% percentile? How, what do you, how good are they? Then, then you can find the, maybe the absolute points if you want. Anyway, here. So we could find other percentiles. And we need a definition that goes with a general P now to be able to compute a percentile, no matter what P that would hit us. Here it comes. I'm not going to take you through these. Uh, we have to work with this, Georgi, with the, but not now, uh, by any way. I can do it here. Um, let me exemplify it instead, what this definition is telling you. Here's a very specific definition that can be used for any size of n and for any size of p, if you use this definition, you can find the percentile. It goes like this. Maybe I should look at it and then do it. Order the data first, right? Here are the ordered, ah, here are the ordered data, sorry, the five data points. 180, 82, 84, 85, 94. And if they are some with the same number, you just put them next to, to each other. That's, that's, not a, that's not a problem. If I jump back, sorry here. Compute PN. So if I'm going for the 25 percentile, 0.25 quantile, I should take the N and multiply by 25 and get, then I get a number between 1 and N because P is between 0 and 1. For instance, and then here we have to know that there are some names for the 25 and the 75 percent quantiles. Uh, it should be, I, I may mix up the quantile percentile word uh, compared to, uh, but, but for me it's the, it's the same, so sorry for, for the confusion there. We give a name, like we have a name to the 
quantile, we'll call that the median. Then we give specific names to the 25% and 75%, those that splits the data into quarters, right? We call those the quartiles, not surprisingly. So there is the lower quartile, Q1, which is the 0.25 quantile, right? And then there's the upper one, which is the 75%. Let's try to find that. You compute NP. Two things can happen now. You either get a non-integer like here. That would most often, in a way, happen if you sort of take all sorts of funny, now I'm stuck here, funny piece. Um, then the rule is, as the exact way to state the rule may look confusing if you're not used to looking at that. If P is a non-integer, oh, actually it's all of this. If P is a non-integer like here, I take the next one. That's basically what it says. There is a mathematical way of talking of the ceiling. Mathematical, which is the same as a function in a computer program that would be in either MATLAB or R. But anyway, we don't have to actually work with this thing. The thing is, when I get 1.25, I should go up and take number two. That's the rule. Because it's between one and two, so I take the next one. That's the definition. So in this case, it would be 182. If we get an integer, and I didn't bring an example, but let's hear it. If I get an integer, like when I have six observations and I want to find the median, like we did before, right? Six observations, p is 0.5, n times 0.5, that would be three. What do I do then? Then I take the average of number three and number four. I take the average, also here, of number whatever and the next one, right? So if it's an integer, I have to average them. If it's not an integer, I take the next one. That's the definition we give here in the book. And I've used it here for the Q1. Now I use it for the upper, the 75% quantile. I take 5, multiply by 0.75. I get 3.75 that will take me up to take the fourth one. So the upper quartile is 185. There is a footnote here that you should have a look at, and it will hit you in the face when you start our software do, finding these things. This is not the only definition of quantiles. This is a nice and simple one that we may ask you to use in some exercises and tests. I may tell you, please find the this quantile using the definition I've given you in the book. This is the definition. Other definitions exist in the software that you might be using, and we'll see that. This one is one of many options, but others exist. That's just the fact of life that sometimes certain concepts do not have a single unique definition. Quantiles are one of such con concepts. That was the quantiles.